Hey guys, Rob Skiba here. So, on this particular video, I am not going to be dogmatic about what you're going to hear. Uh, I'm really just questioning at this point, as I've been thinking about curvature math and how it works on the globe. I've been wondering if the math that we've all been using, 8 inches per mile squared, might not always be the case if you're looking on the east-west line. I'm thinking it might be different. And again, don't go psycho on me or anything like that if I'm wrong about this. I'm just questioning. And now I'll show you why I'm questioning. Going back to the Lake Michigan-Chicago trip, Joshua Nowicki was looking at about 260 degrees to the west, and we were further south looking on a heading of uh, roughly 280 degrees. Actually, it's about 277 degrees. But, okay, so if you zoom out of the Earth, and we go ahead and put a few markers here, one for the equator and one for the latitude that we were at. Now, of course, the ball Earth math that everybody's using is based on the circumference of the Earth, 24,874 miles, uh, from which we derive the, uh, the diameter and the uh, radius. All the ball Earth math is based on the radius of that circumference. But we were at a higher latitude. We were at latitude 41.5 degrees, where the circumference is only 18,630 miles. We were looking 277 degrees to the west, almost exactly due west, uh, which means the curvature math is quite a bit different. The math everybody's using, roughly 8 inches per mile squared, is based on the roughly 25,000 mile circumference ball. We aren't looking at, on that circumference, though. So our math came out to about 10.6 inches per mile squared. In other words, we had a much greater curvature that should have been expected at the location from which we were doing our observations. Now, let me prove this to you, okay? We were here looking in this direction. So let me go ahead and extend everything out, extend these lines so I can show you something. Spinning it around here. This is the difference in the curvature that we're looking at. So obviously you can see with the larger circumference, we have a much more shallow curvature as compared to the 18,630 mile circumference. Again, I'll just compare. I mean, there's quite a bit more curvature. So let's consider our test. The weatherman said that what Joshua Nowicki encountered was atmospheric lensing. So let's drop a lens in. Here we go, and magically it pulled the city up over the curve and enlarged it so he could see it. Oh, cool, look at the atmospheric lensing. Is that why he was able to see what he saw? What about us? We took a little ride over the steeper curvature. Whee! It's a fun boat ride over the curve. Boop. And as a result, we were able to see the city. So which one of these examples is true? Are either of them accurate? Again, I'm just asking questions... I don't know. It seems to me if I'm standing on that latitude line and, and I'm looking across that latitude line at an east-west direction, that the curvature would have to be greater. Now, others argue and say, no, uh, the shortest distance between two points on a globe, uh, you know, like anything else, is a straight line, but a straight line on the globe is calculated by what they call the Great Circle Navigation. Wikipedia defines the Great Circle Navigation as the practice of navigating a vessel or ship or aircraft along a great circle. A great circle track is the shortest distance between two points on the surface of a sphere. The Earth isn't exactly spherical, but the formulas for a sphere are simpler and are often accurate enough for navigation. And it's got, you know, they got all kinds of formulas and stuff like that that you can check out for how they do that. Or you can look at websites like gcmap.com, Great Circle Mapper, and it'll show you stuff like this, where if you're going from like Hong Kong to San Francisco, this is the route you would take. You wouldn't just go, you know, across the ocean like this, you know, by Hawaii. Instead, you're going to go up over uh, and by Alaska. Here's another example. Uh, website blog.flightradar24.com. The flight paths in great circles or why you flew over Greenland. Uh, we've often asked why an individual flight is flying a particular route, or put another way, why do we fly over Greenland? Long-distance flights are designed to be the most efficient way to get from point A to point B 
on the other side of the world. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line, but when a line on a globe is shown on a two-dimensional map, it looks like an arc. In the example above, an Air Canada flight from Toronto to Hong Kong looks like it's taking a very long route to Hong Kong, but it's actually the shortest distance between the two cities. So let's look at our little animation again. Here's the equator, right? And let's go ahead and raise up the uh, destination line. Let's say you're flying from New Jersey to Madrid. So you would think you just kind of fly right across like this, you know, maintain an exactly due east heading. But no, they're going to basically divide the Earth in half, create an artificial equator right here, which gives you the great circle, which on the circle of the Earth map just so happens to be a straight line. But let's look at it like this. Okay, so they're going to plot the great circle navigation. Now pay attention to the compass. In order to fly this, you're going to start with a east-northeast heading, and eventually you're going to end up going east, and then you're going to be going east-southeast, whereas the plane on the bottom is just going due east. Now the difference between the two uh, is only about 12 minutes at 500 miles per hour. You see that the direct east path is 3,732 miles versus the Great Circle path, which is 3,629 miles. So at 500 miles per hour, the difference is about 12 minutes. <laughs> um, okay, but, you know, like I said, on a flat Earth map, it's a straight line. So, going back to my Lake Michigan trip, we were neither looking nor navigating across the Great Circle when we went across the lake. We, hit, we were looking at a, on a heading of 277 degrees, and we drove our boat on that heading. Maybe an easier way of understanding this is just get some string tied around a globe. This string right here is obviously going to be quite a bit longer than this string right here. Okay. Now this other string that I have here, this would represent the great circle where I'm dividing the earth in half again, creating two hemispheres, creating an artificial equator. And um, so there you go. But if you're looking directly, you know, if that's north and you're heading due west, 270 degrees, you're going to follow that line, keeping north, right, off to your right. But, so, you know, if I tilt the earth sideways like this, just like I did in my animation, just imagine yourself standing on one of these strings, either the equator or the 41.5 degree latitude. You're looking at a much shallower curve on the 41.5. Now, you know, that's Lake Michigan, so looking at the scale here, and the way I have these strings here, let me just uh, fix this string right here. It looks kind of wonky. But, okay, so, you know, if I'm going exactly due west, keeping north, you know, off to the right, and it seems to me I'm going I'm going to be navigating right on that line. I'm not going to be navigating on a curved great circle line. At least that's what it seems to me. I don't know. Could be wrong. Just putting it out there for your consideration. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video presentation. If you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like the video, and share it on your favorite social media sites. There's a lot more to come, so stay tuned, and we'll see you back next time.